Okay, let's have a class. Um, we first of all would love to go over the results from last week. So remember, you have uh, three plates. We did the enzymatic reaction with the bacteria using a higher level of energy. So the first one, sprit blue agar. And what we did is one side we had Staphylococcus aureus, and the other side we had E. coli. And uh, we said after 35 degrees Celsius, 48 hour, we need to see the transparent zone. Which side has a transparent zone? Can you do an observation? Is that Staphylococcus aureus? Can I have some of the samples from the other students? Yes. Okay, if you can just grab two. Which side has transparent zone? Just have a question for you. Which side? Let's let me see what one of the samples is good. It seems like it's uh, it's all the same. This side. How about your results? Looks like. <coughs> Same thing? Yeah. Then that may not be a Staphylococcus aureus. <laughs> is that right? Okay, so the idea results, it should be looks like the Staphylococcus aureus has a transparent zone. And the E. coli should be originally looks the same because SA has lipase. So I just tell you the results. Now the second one should be very obvious is a skin milk agar. You should can see there is a one side has transparent zones, the other side we do not have it. Same thing, E. coli. This time we use bacillus, which side? It should be the bacillus side, is that right? Has a transparent zone. So the bacillus side has a transparent zone. Okay, now the last one, what we did is a starch agar. And this confirmation test, you're gonna do it later on by yourself. Is that okay? So what we did is the two sides. One side is E. coli, the other side is Bacillus subtilis. So what we should do, we should dump in iodine. When we add the grind iodine, there is a one side that should be brownish color, another side should not be brownish color. Which side should be brownish color? E. coli side should be brownish color. This side should be no brownish color. Uh, because bacillus, we expected it has amylase. Okay? You can do this test by yourself. Just dump the iodine in there. Is that clear? So that's pretty much very simple. Um, Sprit agar, we see Staphylococcus aureus, transparent zone, and we just have the lipase. And the, um, the, the second agar is skin milk agar. <coughs> skin milk agar, we should see. Um, Bacillus subtilis is a transparent zone. We saw it already in the starch agar, you dump with ground iodine. Bacillus subtilis side, should be no brownish because the enzyme has already been used as starch. So starch has been hydrolyzed, so they cannot be reacted with iodine. Okay, so today and uh, Thursday and next week, Tuesday, we will be focused on this fact sheets. By the way, we also have a fact sheets right here. This is for the uh, last lab, okay? So you can grab them. We're gonna have a two clinical lab. The first clinical lab, is urinary tract infection. Okay. So UTI, urinary tract infection. So the first thing first, since we are in a microbiology lab, what is the number one pathogen cause urinary tract infection? Very simple, E. coli. Responsible for 90% of urinary tract infection in the US. Because of this, sometimes this type of E. coli, we call it a urological E. coli. 
Okay, it is different from E. coli 0157H7 and the generic E. coli. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to mention. Second, what are the symptoms of UTI, urinary tract infection? We have a terminology called dysuria. Difficult to pee. And we said very simple. You have a burning during the burning feeling during you go to rest go to the restroom, and the, uh, you feeling it's never end up, and you feeling about a body man pain, and you are more frequently need to go to the restroom. So that's anyway it's called a dysuria, which is called it's difficult to be. Now, one of the main reasons will cause UTI. There is a several reason will cause UTI. Number one is being female. Will be one of the major reasons to cause UTI because a female urinary tract is short. Okay, urinary tract is much shorter than, than male. So that's easy to get contaminated. This is the number one reason. Number two reason is hold on the pee too long. So let's say there is a basketball uh, football between WVU and the University of Pittsburgh and it's been like two hours and you're too excited in there in the stadium. You didn't go to the restroom even you want it. Okay, hold on the pee too long will cause UTI if you keep doing that. So there's a number three, there's a reason is a urethral tract And we also call it a cassia catheterization, which is related to catheter. So what happened is that there is a catheter which is inserted into the body for some of the patients, let's say in Ruby Hospital. And ideally, those type of the urine transmitted pipes, or we say catheter, has to be refreshed every three days or maybe every other day, it depends. However, some of the catheterization has been staying in the patient for too long, about a week. The molds and the yeast are gonna grow there, so cause UTI. This is basically the molds and the yeast will be growing there. Now, last reason is obviously, you have a kidney disease. Okay, kidney stone, kidney cancer, all kind of thing will cause UTI. Okay, so that's some of the basic knowledge about UTI. Now in this class, what we're gonna focus on is a very basic, identify a bacteria from the urine sample. So we're gonna do several things uh, today. Number one is a dip stick test. So very simple, let's say you go to a hospital. You're not feeling very well. The nurse will say, okay, go to the restroom, collect your urine sample. So we have a cup here. The standard urine cup I bought from Amazon a couple of years ago. So okay, have one. Go to get your urine sample. This is what we usually call it a casual. Casual urine collection which means you just pee in the rest of, uh, in the hospital and then you get the urine sample. Then, most of the time, what they're gonna do, the nurse will do a very quick test. It's a dip stick. So we usually insert in here, and then to see the color change, then the color sheet is right here. Now, what we are really looking for, if you look at the color sheets, I have uh, three bottles here, you can use some. There is like a nitrite, protein, pH, blood, ketone, glucose, lots of the items there. What we are really looking for from the microbiology standpoint, we are looking for three items. Number one is nitrite. So this is what happened. 
nitrate will be reduced to nitrite. And in our body, because we more or less taking some of the ready to eat meat. So for example, like ham, like turkey, breast, and uh, like hot dogs, those products, when they manufactured, they have a sodium nitride there. We call it a curing products. And those curing products, they have a nitrites. If the bacteria, especially E. coli, is existing in your body, in the urine tract, these will become positive. Okay, so the first thing is a nitrate. The second thing when we look at that is white blood cell. We should not have a white blood cell tested in the urine sample. If the white blood cell tested, we will say it is possible you have a urinary tract infection. And we are not really testing white blood cell. We are testing leukocyte enzyme, which means it is an enzyme will be testing you the streak, you the dips, uh, dipstick. So that's called the leukocyte esterase. We'll test the enzyme. The last one, obviously, red blood cell. If it's tested red blood cell in your urine sample, possibly it's urinary tract infection. But be careful. There could be a misleading symptoms because there is a, around like 30, 40% of the female, so it will be naturally if you do a testing of the urine sample. It very possible it has red blood cell positive for unknown reason. So that's not necessary, okay? So this is three items. Usually the first thing that in the hospital they will do a test. Any of these are positive. We will move on to the next stage is qualitative test. So what are the qualitative tests? Qualitative test, we will be using two bacteria agar, and you should know. What are the two bacteria agar? This is McConkie agar and a blood agar. So those are the things we first to do. Yes, you have a urine sample. We will be very simple to do is streak plating onto the two agars, which is Makanki agar and the blood agar. So let's say this is blood agar. Blood agar. And the top one is Makanki agar. Okay, what are we are looking for? We're looking for presence, absence of the bacteria. So, because the number one pathogen caused by UTI is E. coli, so what's going to happen on the Makanki agar? It's a pink colony, is that right? If it's lactose fermentation, possible. Now, on the blood agar, what are we going to see? Of course, it is going to, you see, going to grow. There is a colony there. Sometimes, on the blood agar, you will see a beta hemolytic. If you see a beta hemolytic colony there, which means it's a very invasive contamination or infection. That could be coming from kidney disease. Okay, now let's say if any of these other, which is showing positive, you see there is a lot of the colony growing. What are we going to do? Number three, come. 
quantitative test. Okay, how to do quantitative test? We will prepare just a neutron argument. A neutron argon is a regular neutron argon. Okay, you will be using loop. Um, let me see whether we have some loop here. We should have some as an example. Uh, Ryan, can you have some loop at the back or somewhere? With the plastic loop? Plastic loop, do you have some? If you have some plastic loop, you could use metal loop, but you could also use plastic loop. I will explain to you when we get to, to, to get get to do. So how we do it? Use a loop. We'll touch the urea sample. Okay. Touch once. Then uh, I got one already. So we will do a very intensive, gentle streak like this. Then turn 90 degree to a second very intensive streak. But make sure the loop is not go back to the original solution, urea solution. Okay? Then we're gonna add 35 degrees Celsius in cubic 24 hours. We want to look for the colonies there. They are colony gonna grow there. Okay. Let's see if we have the patient the colony looks like this. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Is this person have U U UTI? So let's talk about that. This is a loop, is that right? If you use loop to streak here, how many bacterial carrier? 0 0.001 microliter. If I have a certain colony there, how many colony in this original cup? In this urea solution? How many it is? It is 30 multiplied by 1 divided 0 0.001. And this one equals 1,000. This is a dilution factor. So how many total bacteria in this urine sample? It is 30 multiplied by 1,000 equals 13,000. CFU per ml. Is this person UTI? No, not yet. The clinical standard is more than a hundred thousand CFU per ml. So this person is not UTI. Because this number is less than that. However, this person will be recommended to see a doctor every three or half a year to do a routine test to see whether it's developed the infection in the body. Okay? So that will be the story. Okay, what are we going to do the lab today? Majority of you will be using a uh, made the urine sample. This is the made the urine sample, so you collect it. Make sure two hands have uh, gloves. The first job I will do is that two of you work together. Collect a dip stick right here. So how you do it? Take it out and dip in about 15 seconds, take it out, 
and and you can see the color change within 30 within 60 seconds and you can compare the color sheet right here and we are going to look in for is three marker nitrite white blood cell which is leukocyte asteroids last one is red blood cell this is dipstick test okay there will be two of you work together have one then everybody go there to get a blood agar and a macaulay agar we will do a strict plating of this one we will see the qualitative test which means presence absence of the e coli in the urine sample and then you also going to use your loop to do a strict plating which is we want to see whether is a quality quantitative test will be rich a hundred thousand cell and then we're going to count on thursday then in this lab we also would love to have three students could be volunteer to test your own urea who wants to do that i want some male some female which means some boys some girls who wants to do that who is volunteer? Can you do it, Clayton? Yeah. One more. Who? It's twenty dollars free test. You don't have to pay me. You have even you have insurance. You go clinical. You're not feeling very well. Twenty dollar copay, at least. It depends on your insurance. Somebody sometimes fifty dollar. Who wants to pay? I want some girls can be. Volunteer to do it. Who wants to do it? You don't have to tell me the results. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to do it? Who's volunteer to do it? Okay, very good. Who else? Who wants to do it? Okay, if no more, then you use the urine sample. Okay, make sure the other one thing. Try your best, there is no dip on the bench. Because it's still urine sample. Otherwise, it goes to afternoon, it's going to be really smells bad. <laughs> you should do the urine sample by yourself, go to the restroom and pee. Then, it's going to be due by yourself. Ignore all of these. You're going to do a dipstick test by yourself and get three plates that will be on sample. And I'll give you a sterilized loop. Because I don't want you to get contaminated and then think about you don't have disease, then test it, you have a positive. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you sterilized loop. But make sure when this finished, these two is go back to the restroom and dump it. Don't left on your bench. We don't need it. Okay, be, be careful. So get it by yourself. If possible, you can wash your hands first, then get a urine sample. Don't try to contaminate it with the environmental sample because otherwise it will give you misleading results, okay? So try to do everything is an aseptic technique, okay? But anyway, this is still called a clean catch urine, which means not, oh sorry, this is a casual urine, it's different from clean catch urine. This is what we did in the hospital. Somebody else, if you want to do, we still have some. I usually do two to four in each lab. Okay, those these couple are expensive, like $2 or one. I told you it's a free test, you should do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and to do that and don't forget the amylase test okay